Selene. And I'm going to talk about starting a new painting. It's going to be of a blackthorn hedge and I've been out making some photographs and I brought them back and put them into a folder on my laptop, which I'm looking through and I'm going to make a selection. I'll probably work from more than one image, but for now, I've chosen this one as the basis for a painting. Now, it's going to be a square painting um, and I could crop this photo and make it into a square image, but because I want to use full screen like this, what I'm going to do is just, I want just the right amount of cloud, I want all of the foreground, and to produce a square image I've got these pieces of foam which came in the uh, box of pastels and it, they work quite nicely so you move them about a bit and nice and dark and I can also get an eye I can still see through what's behind so that's more or less my composition um, very crude editing technique but it works fine um, I'm now going to make a preliminary sketch um, on a piece of paper and because it's a square painting I'm going to make I want a piece of square paper so that's that and I'll use a combination of um, materials here I've got some oil pastels some chalky pastels I like these Conte pencils um, just to make some marks so I'll pick out a few of the colors that I'm probably going to use here some pinks and uh, the green Okay, get started. So the idea is to find the shapes. It's probably a little bit too high, that line there. But, and patterns, because if you know my paintings, they are reduced to a more or less two-dimensional series of patterns and shapes. So I want to see the, the composition as a whole. Um, I want the marks I'm making here to inform what I'll do later with paint. Um, but an exercise like this is a sketch which I'll use um, to transfer to the canvas, but it's also a way of um, sorting out the composition in my head and getting an idea of where I'm going with the picture. Um, so each of these parts will become um, a little texture in itself. Hi, what I'm going to do now is transfer the sketch I made yesterday onto my canvas. We're here in my garden studio, needs must in these uh, difficult times. This is the preliminary sketch I made. And here's the canvas that I've already prepared using primer uh, with a mixture of uh, red and a little bit of yellow ochre pigment in it, um, just to give it a, a more interesting um, background. I've added a small amount of um, Liquitex as well, which allows the uh, paint to slide over the surface. Um, so that I can make marks and scratch into it. These um, oil bars, they're really nice for drawing with. Sometimes that will stay evident in the picture. I've still got my uh, photo up on the laptop um, behind me, inside in the shadow. I'm only transferring some of these marks so the abstraction continues. I'm not particularly worried about colour 
at this point. Although I am representing. Okay, so marks like this and lovely these oil bars. Very nice and they're nice in this warm weather as well because they're slightly softer than they used to be in my cold studio. Sometimes I like the painting at this stage when it's very minimal. I want to leave it, but then um, I feel it's not enough. Shapes and patterns. This is nice, this is cadmium yellow. They're fairly expensive these, but look at that. Lovely, luscious. You can resist that. These are gonna be areas of dandelions. Um, I don't have very many colors, but that, that will do to get me started. Okay, right, okay, next step is let's get some paint on it's titanium white which keeps your color brighter than um, other whites mixing white or, or zinc white i'm not putting any fluorescence um, as underpainting in this particular uh, piece of work i've used that quite a lot recently fluorescent um, underpainting but i decided not to do it because um, i want the softness of the spring light um, rather than the uh, bright, dazzling summer light. So I'm going to block in some areas. I uh, brought stuff home from the studio, so I've only got a, a limited selection of um, bits of equipment here. Um, I like old brushes. I'm going to put some dark areas in. Uh, deep sap green, um, burnt umber. And a bit of ultramarine that makes a nice almost blackish color which I'm going to use for these the, the, it's very difficult working in this strong sunlight um, you need good light <laughs> but you can have too much quite see the colors very well To get dark patches in so they good to put light over dark works quite well I'm going to go over that bit of it will eventually be quite a light painting now this is a lovely color I bought it um, in a sale box um, in an art shop it's uh, it's this one here um, emerald green and it's fantastic when you mix it with yellow you, you couldn't get a brighter green than that if you want that sharp spring green acid green that you get springtime that shouts at you then that's how I get it if you put a little bit of white in it knocks it back but um, that's going to go in here see why I've got the pink canvas the contrast between the two some of that pink will remain visible even when the paintings completed right I'm gonna put a normally my palette is a big piece of formica um, and uh, the beauty of being self-taught is um, I don't follow any rules as to how I do this um, so probably um, breaking lots of them. Look at my and I do abuse my paintbrushes 
badly by painting on the side and scrubbing them, so that's what how they end up like that. The leaves are just starting to come through the old vegetation that's died back. Probably add some texture to this. Hello, I'm going to continue with this hedgerow piece um, again today. Since uh, the last bit of video, I've added a few further shapes. Um, some of this lower part of the grassy area, the verge, and now I'm going to work on these twiggy bits of hedge, which are just about coming into leaf. I'm going to paint some branches in and then later most of that will get painted out but it has to go in to start with. Sap green, burnt umber and a tiny bit of Prussian blue. Okay, uh, ultramarine, titanium white, and I mixed it in an area where there was a bit of green yesterday because it's a spring sky and I want this fairly bluey green colour. some ultramarine to the sky because it was looking a bit too greenish um, and I couldn't differentiate it from some of these greeny blues here. I've also placed in some of these um, rather odd looking circular motifs which are going to be um, the uh, blossom crowned on the, on the boughs um, which I'll add detail to later. I'm going to put a bit more of that in now. 